Assalamualaikum and good day. In this video, we're going to learn about Introduction to Java Enterprise Edition. This topic outlines the features of Java Platform, Enterprise Edition Java EE, and the basic concepts behind Enterprise Application Development. Alright, in the past, the client server application used the two-tier architecture that is based on the client server model. It consists of client tier and database tier. The client server communicates directly with the database server. Data or information transfer between the two components is fast due to the absence of middleware. So the client tier contains the code for interfacing with the user and also for saving data in the database server. The client tier sends the request to the server and it processes the request and send backs with the data. This means client tier handles both the presentation layer and the client tier. However, the two tier architecture have some drawbacks such as easy to deploy but difficult to enhance or upgrade and it makes reuse of business and presentation logic difficult and also is not scalable and not suited for internet. Now, let's look at differences between Java EE and Java SE. So basically, Java technology is both a programming language and a platform. The Java programming language is a high-level object-oriented language that has a particular syntax and styles. So a Java platform is a particular environment in which Java programming language application runs. So in Java SE, it's actually better used to describe the core Java, while Java EE is always used for Java 2 platform. So for Java SE, it's a high-level programming language which derives much of its syntax from C and C++, whereas Java EE is a platform based on Java which is basically extension of the Java SE. So for Java SE, it is primarily used for developing desktop application. Whereas for Java EE, it mainly used for developing multi-tiered web-based application. It can be used for both desktop and web applications. So SE is actually as an OOP-based language which simplifies software development. Whereas in EE, we use many collection of Java APIs which target enterprise technologies. Alright, let's move on to Java EE platform. So Java EE platform is designed to help developers create large-scale, multi-tiered, scalable, reliable, and secure network application. So a shorthand name for such application is enterprise application. So called because these applications are designed to solve the problems encountered by large enterprise. Enterprise applications are not only useful for large corporations, agencies, and governments. The benefits of an enterprise application are helpful, even essential, for individual developers and also small organizations in an increasingly networked world. So the features that make enterprise application powerful, like security and reliability, often make this application complex. So the Java EE platform is designed to reduce the complexity of enterprise application development by providing a development model, API, and runtime environment that allow developers to concentrate on functionality. So basically, it will solve the two-tier architecture problem. Alright, let's look at the overview of the changes made to the Java EE platform. So this diagram gives an overview of the important changes made to the EE platform since the release of the first version in December 1999. So this diagram highlights the update and also the major improvement in each of the version. So as you can see previously, it named as J2EE and somehow in this um, area, it dropped the 2 and become only Java EE. And then this is the um, changes until the now it's using Java EE 7 which support on the cloud 
and then this is the feature stepping updated in Java E7. Alright, let's look at Java platform. So all Java platform consists of a JVM, Java Virtual Machine, and Application Programming Interface, which is API. So the Java Virtual Machine is a program for a particular hardware and software platforms that runs Java technology application. Whereas an API is a collection of software component that you can create other software components or application. So each Java platform provide a virtual machine and API. So this will allow application return for that platform to run on any compatible system with all the advantages of the Java programming language. So there are four platforms of Java programming language. The first one is Java SE. When most people think about Java programming language, they always think about this Java SE. So this is actually the core API. They provide core library for data structure, XML parsing, security, internalization, and also database connectivity together with RMI. The next one is Java EE. The Java EE is built, built on top of the Java SE platform. So EE basically provide an API and runtime environment for developing and running large-scale, multi-tiered, scalable, reliable, and also secure network application. Next is Java ME. Java ME provide an API and small footprint virtual machine for running Java programming language application on small device like mobile phone. So basically, the API is a subset of the Java SE API along with the special class library useful for the small device application development. So basically, Java ME are often clients of Java EE platform services. Next one is Java FX. So Java FX is actually a platform for creating rich internet application using a lightweight user interface API. Java FX application use hardware accelerated graphics and media engines to take advantage of higher performance client and a modern look and feel as well as high level APIs for connecting to network data sources. So basically Java XX application may be clients of Java EE platform services. Right, moving on to Java EE Enterprise Edition. So it is actually widely used platform that contain a set of coordinated technologies that significantly reduce the cost and complexity of developing, deploying, and also managing the multi-tier server-centric application. So EE is built upon the SE platform, as I said just now, and also provide a set of APIs. So in Java EE, we can develop a Java web application where it generates interactive web pages containing various types of markup language. So markup language such as HTML, XML, and HTML5, and so on, and also dynamic content. Okay. In web components, we have JSP, Servlet, and also Java Wins. So these components actually is to modify and temporarily store data interact with database and web services and render content in response to their client requests. So let's look at the role of application server. So basically, a Java EE server is a server application that implements the Java EE services, Java EE platform, and also provide the standards of Java EE. So Java EE server are sometimes called as application servers. So because they allow you to serve the application data to clients, much as how web servers serve web page to web browser. So the Java EE server provides services to this component in the form of a container. Alright, let's look at container. What is Java EE container? So Java EE container are the interface between a Java component and low-level platform-specific functionality, for example, transaction and state management, multi-trading, and also resource pooling that supports the component. So basically, it provides for the separation of business logic from resource and lifecycle management. 
So this is also allow developer to focus on writing the business logic rather than writing enterprise infrastructure. So we use containers to simplify the development. So this is an example. When a request comes in, okay, let's say you develop a servlet and then the servlet needs to be instantiated and create a new thread to handle the request. So this is the web server and then this is the servlet. Okay, so then call the service request whether is it uh, do post or do get method and pass the HTTP request and HTTP response object. So this is happened in the web server. Web server handle the HTTP request and also HTTP response object. When you get the request and the response to the servlet and then it manage the life that of resources of that particular servlet. So we will learn in detail about servlet in another chapter. Right, let's look at container types. So basically in Java EE, you have about three container types. The first one is web container which manage the execution of JSP page and also servlet component for Java EE application. Second is application client container, this one. It will manage the execution of the application client components to the Java EE server which is web container and EJB container. EJB container manage the execution of the enterprise win for the Java EE application. So this is the example of EE architecture. So as you can see here, EE architecture have a web container. So web container here will actually play a role as to run the web components. So we have JSP, servlet here, techlibs, websocket, web service, Java server faces. So these are all our web components that can interact with the client connecting to the Java EE application. And then you can see that we have the EJB container. So EJB container will run the application logic and EJB are actually a Java class that contain and manipulate the core data structure and then will link to the database. So database tier here holds all the application data that the Java application needs to exist longer than the scope of a single session of the application or simply between the different steps in the application that are separate in time. So this is an example of hello world application. So basically, this is your browser. Okay, in the browser, it will display the HTML page and send user message. So basically, you will invoke a request and will send the get to the web container which is using the display server. So this, the display server will go to the EJB container. Okay, send a message there and it will process the message and then it will ask for the message to store the data here and responds back to the model EJB where it resides on the EJB container and responds back to the web container and it will display back the results. So this is basically the Hello World application works in Java EE application. Alright, moving on to MVC. So MVC is a model view controller architecture where it have a pattern that used in the software engineering to separate the application logic from the user interface. So MVC has three layers which is model, which are model, view and controller. So model basically represent the business layer of the application, view define the presentation of the application and controller manage the flow of the application. We will look into detail in this in the next topic. Alright, let's look at Java EE components. So Java EE components such as web components are actually Java servlet, JSP page or web service endpoints. So servlets are actually Java programming language classes that dynamically process requests and construct responses. Whereas JSP are actually the one that here, okay, there are text-based components that actually embed with HTML that execute as servlets but allow a more natural approach to creating the static content. So basically, both can be used in the web components. Okay, and then we also have a Java Beans components here that interact directly with the database. So this is in the web server and this is the web client. Alright, I think that's all for now. Please read chapter 
to for details and more examples in your future thank you